Hallelujah. If you were not here Sunday, uh, I encourage you to go back and listen to Sunday service. It is, it is the first part of, a, of at least a two-part uh, teaching on Egypt, just ain't all that. Amen. How they're going back to the things you came out of, is just not, it just doesn't cut the mustard on you know, where you are. It's not, you know, Egypt is not the answer for where you are in troubles you're facing now. Amen. Hallelujah. And it talked, we talked about how, that, um, how that, you know, the children of Israel came out, and then they appointed a captain to take them back in to where they had been brought out of bondage. You know? And so our title of that sermon, our, our teaching there is, Egypt, it just ain't all that. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you got people who come out, they, they kind of get, get set free, they're on fire for the Lord, serving God, and all of a sudden you find them wanting to come, go back and try to do everything they used to do while they were in the world, but do it as a Christian and get away with it. Amen. And it just don't work. I, as a, um, just a little thought here, let's... I'm going to read something to you. There's an article in Charisma. And I'm not going to read the whole article because it's too much. But um, the writer here under, under a thing here, just, just under this picture, on, in the Charisma online article, he said this, It is increasingly common to hear about worship leaders getting drunk after church services and dropping F-bombs while they boast about their liberty in the Lord. And churches hiring, this one guy, he got hired, he, got, he kind of mocked his Facebook page, and so he, he answered back with the scripture, and then got in a conversation with a guy. The guy plays guitar at his church, he's an atheist, doesn't believe in Jesus Christ at all, but the church needed the guitar, so they hired him. So we got atheist, God-mocking guitarist, and drunken, F-bomb-dropping worship leaders in our churches, because they can, they can sing or whatever, and they got liberty in Christ. I say there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the, with the mindset. There's something wrong with that philosophical approach. Uh, it, it, it is, well, that's what it is. It's a philosophical approach. It is a godless, worldly mindset. Remember, the Bible says this, that the wisdom of this world is first earthly, sensual, and devilish. The Bible talks about the, that the wisdom of God is peaceful, easy to be entreated. Amen. I believe it even says something about it encompasses righteousness or something. I forgot exactly how it's worded. But understand this, there's, there's a battle going on, folks. There's a battle going on. So we're not going to talk about that. I just thought that. Through. I saw that. That kind of ran by my Facebook feed today from uh, Tim and Vicki Kilstrom. They had, they had posted that. And I thought, my, drunken worship leaders. Oh, but we're free in the Lord. Hallelujah. Sit around. Now listen, I don't know if you know this or not. There are churches that the men's fellowship are stogie parties. They get together and smoke stogies. And some of them, they drink beer, drinking beer, smoking stogies, and that's their men's fellowship. There's a battle. I said, there's a battle. So we, okay, now let me get into my sermon. We're going to get into my sermon now. Bill, you can leave that out there if you want to. I really don't care. You know, just, we need to slap some folks upside the head with the word. Amen. Amen. You're not that free. Amen. The Bible says, do not use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Now, all these people who purport some of this stuff, just kind of leave that verse out because that's bondage. That's law. You're telling me I can't do something. Now, the Bible said don't use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Why? Because your flesh will, um, well, it'll lead you down the path of destruction. All right. Our sermon tonight, we're entering into 2013. As we enter into the new calendar year, it's usually assumed that there's a new word for that year. Now listen, folks, no matter what anybody comes up with this year, you can use it in 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and last year. Because they all end in teen. You know how we've always got a rhyming word. The word this year is, you know, uh, more and, and four and, you know, um, whatever, you know. It's going to be great in 08, you know. I mean, we just, we kind of, we, we go, we're, the Lord gave us that. Well, I, I don't believe the Lord, I mean, I'm not saying the Lord can't and the Lord doesn't and the Lord has it. But, you know, you know eventually you just run out, you get, kind of get to the point where, now here we're on the things, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Every word we could have could be used in any of those, in any one thing that rhymes with you could use it for all those years. Um, so, you know, sometimes there are, there are things that God is speaking and, and so forth. But I, I just kind of got stirred this year. Um, not to write a new vision. We've taught on vision, writing your vision, having your vision, confessing your vision. If you didn't get it this year, write it down and do it all over again. We've talked about that. For, we've had those sermons over the years that I've preached. But the Lord just seemed to press upon me that we've got to get to the place of, in a life of consistency, 
of day to day and year to year that a, that a day change or a calendar year change does not affect our walk with the Lord. That we don't get super enthused because we entered out of, left one year and then we entered into another. Let me tell you something. The same devil you've dealt with all 2013 is the same devil you're going to deal with in 2014. Amen. The victories you may experience in 12 didn't leave just because we got to 13. Hello. Are y'all here? You going home? How many here? Ready? We're just waiting. So we're, we're going to talk about this along this line. God, now listen, um, we have to raise really consistent in our daily lives if you're going to see the blessing consistently. God's not just looking for a few good men, but a spiritual army of men and women of faith and the Holy Ghost who are not moved during bad times or good ones. Now, I've read this to you before out of, out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, where Paul says, I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. You know, we, I've been initiated, to, you know, whether, you know, in all sufficiency or whatever, you know, and he goes, says, I can do all things through Christ. I, I was doing a, I was reading a commentary and it's frustrating. I have looked and looked, I was looking today. I said, I've got to find it. Going on, going out there and just looking at all kinds of commentaries. I read it somewhere years ago and I don't know where I read it. And I had it in the Bible that got misplaced, so I don't, you know. <clears throat> but that one commentary said, Paul said this there in Philippians. And then I, I did read one commentary today that kind of said it, but didn't say it exactly this way. But Paul said, I know how to abound. And how to be, a, you know, and how now to be a base? How to live with lack, live in prosperity. Okay, here at base, to be abound everywhere in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry. How both to abound and to suffer need. And this other, this commentary was talking about this. He said this. Paul said, "I know how to be uh, to to abound and not lose my head, and I know how to have lack and not lose my poise." In other words, you don't change. You don't go losing your head just because you got a lot of money. Woo! Praise God. And some Christians do. Remember the guy who won the lottery up in West Virginia about ten years ago? Yeah. You know, won millions of dollars, and he he got on television. First thing I don't do is tithe. He, grandkids got murdered. Would go to uh, gambling places with half a million dollars. Hello, and I don't know, but you know, it seems like it seems like this may not be accurate, but it seems like he died broke. Because he, he couldn't handle the money. He lost, it. He lost his head. Yeah. See, you can't lose your head just because a lot of stuff comes in. And you can't lose your poise just because there's not enough there. Right. Amen? Well, wow. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The anointing of God is that sustaining factor in your life that keeps you steady day in and day out. Glory to God. And I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to get the anointing drunk and dropping F-bombs. Hello? And you're not going to get it with them leading your worship service either, pastors. My God, don't you have any spiritual discernment in your bones at all? Unless you're out there drinking with them, cussing with them. Hello? Getting drunk, you're dropping, you're talking about how they're, how they're liberated in Christ. You're not that liberated. Nobody's that liberated. God's called us to a consistent, stable lifestyle. Amen. And, uh, you know, and although, you know, you, come, you may have gone through 2013 with all kinds of plans, came into the new year, you heard the words, and you, somebody had a word, and you listened to it, and you glassed the hold of it, and you put it on your refrigerator, and some things didn't happen yet, that doesn't mean you need to lose your, your, your poise. That's right. That's right. You don't need to give up and throw in the towel and say, oh, my God, the calendar year's in, and I don't get that. Come on now. Amen. Remember, uh, who, who preached that sermon a number of years ago? I can't remember if it was Brother Osteen or whoever. You know, uh, Sunday's on the way. God don't, Brother Osteen preached that, yeah, you know, John Osteen, not, not Joel, John, his dad, you know, I mean, God don't always pay up on Saturday, but Sunday's on the way, glory to God. I want you to know there are things you've been believing God for, looking for, holding on for, you know, express, believing God's, and just because we've left the calendar year doesn't mean you're not going to get it. It's not based on the calendar year, it's based on your faith. Did you receive, believe that you received when you prayed? Did you lay hold of it by faith? Glory to God. You don't have to quit and give up just because it, in about 27 minutes, the, 20, the 2013 year ends for us here. Are you here? And we enter into 2014. God's still God. Your faith, listen, your faith will work even after you're gone. The Bible said Abel's blood, you know, him being dead yet speaketh. Raymond Bible Church, the, old, the, old, the uh, family that owned that property. There's a little knoll. You got to understand in Tulsa, a knoll is an anthill. I mean, if it's, if it's above two centimeters, it's a knoll. Hallelujah. 
And I'm a little unfair out there because there are some places up on, on um, over towards Old Roberts University out back behind there. It's 91st and 101st. There's some kind of little hilly places out there, uh, you know, just, just, you know, so I'm being a little unfair, you know. But in relationship to where we live, they're nulls. Anyway, hallelujah. Glory to God. And if, if you don't know this, uh, uh, Tulsa's on a plateau. If you go out the northeast side and go out, out in the country a good 30, 40 miles, you'll drop off and you look back up there up on a plateau. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking, too. I've, I've seen it before. So all of our Tulsa friends, we love you. Hallelujah. But there was a little knoll there about where Raymond Bible Church was, and those people prayed. And, and for, for like 80 years earlier, nothing happened. And God used this land for the kingdom of God. God used this for your kingdom. And then later, Raymond Bible Church Church. I'm telling you, faith goes on. Yeah. Yeah. I said faith goes on. It's not limited by a calendar date. Are you here? Glory to God. How about, the, how about the Old Testament saints? These having died in faith, not receiving the promise, that they without us should not be made perfect. Their faith held them all those decades and millennia and, you know, in Abraham's bosom, waiting for the kingdom of God to come, for Jesus to come and preach to the captives held in, in prison. They're, they without us should not be made perfect. Their faith was still working. Amen. Glory to God. I said, that's, that's worth shouting over. And so, you know, I know we're going to hear a lot of things. Now, Brother Copeland's got a great prophecy out for 2014. It's good. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Y'all lay hold. I mean, talking about the, end of, you know, the, the ending of death and the, and, the, and, the, and the power of love being released in the church in this next year. A lot of good things in there about forgetting the past and, you know, going forward and keeping hold of your faith and keeping hold of your confession. A lot of, go out there on his website and look at it. It's good. You, you know, you'll find some stuff there that'll bless you. You'll find stuff in there that'll encourage your faith. But one of my messages tonight is this. We have to learn to remain steadfast day in, day out, December 31st, 2013, January 1st, 2014. We're still the same we're men and women of faith and the holy ghost can you say amen we're not gonna wake up tomorrow morning and go whoa it's a new year i'm glad that one's over we wake up tomorrow morning and go i'm a man a woman of faith and what i have spoken and what i decree and what i believe is still going to happen just like i said it would amen glory to god and let me say this don't put your faith in the changing of a calendar year because there's no power in the calendar year to make your faith stronger Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That thing you've laid hold of with your heart, laid hold of because of the Word of God on the inside of you, because of the unction of the Holy Ghost, glory to God, it's there's why you're going to receive it. Not because we're in 2014, but because we're men and women of faith. Amen. I should have seen three people running by now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory. Praise God. Looking at... um. James chapter 1, verse 12. James writes, says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised him that love him, promised to them that love him. Now the word endureth comes from the Greek hopomeno. H-U-M-P-O. I mean, I'm sorry, H-U-P-O-M-E-N-O. -E now you understand this is the English transliteration of the Greek lettering. They're letters we can't, you know, they're not, they're different. So we just call this a, the transliteral. Hupomeno. And it means to remain, to tarry behind, not to recede or to flee. Um, Weist, in his translation, and Weist has some, you know, I don't agree with everything Weist says about his doctrine, but his, his, his insight into the Greek is, is amazing. Has very good insight into how the Greek language spoke things. Okay? Like, and here's what I, he gives you an example of things I don't agree with. He calls the Christian the believing sinner. There's no one in the Bible that calls you the believing sinner. He just, his theology says that. But his, his, his Greek studies and his nuggets of truth in the Greek are really good. Got some really good stuff there. And so here he says, he translates, endureth, remains steadfast. Yeah. Remains, he that remains steadfast in temptation. Ever been tempted to quit? You got to remain steadfast. Yeah. Ever been tempted to throw in the towel? You got to remain steadfast. Now, yesterday we had to run up to, uh, to the cabin, uh, my, my wife's family's cabin, and winterize it. We had not done it yet, and we were concerned that maybe the, if, the, if, the, if they ran out of gas and it got really cold, all the toilets would bust because of ceramic and that kind of stuff. So we had to go ahead and put the antifreeze stuff and everything. And uh, so we decided we'd go over to Boone and go to Daniel Boone Inn. And after we're sitting there for a little while, finally I just took my napkin and went like this, threw it up, let it, and came down. And I said, that's what you do. You just threw in the towel. I just couldn't take it. Couldn't do any more. Oh, it was good, but I just had to throw in the towel. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, listen, you can't do that with your faith. What does the Bible say? Then in due season we will reap if we faint not. What is fainting? It is becoming 
Let me say, understand what I'm, how I'm going to use this. Unsteadfast. That's not a word I know that, but it's, you know, you, you lose, you, you've lost your steadfastness. But the, the Bible says he that remains steadfast in the temptation. Amen? He that remains steadfast, glory to God. Well, we need to learn to remain steadfast, amen? When you're trying to receive the crown of life. You see, there's a crown you're going to receive. Now, for the believer, when you receive the answer to prayer or the answer to your faith, you've received the crown of that prayer. Amen. It is a crown of life. It is an answer to what you were believing God for. Now, you may have come into this last year saying, I'm believing God for this and I'm believing God for that. And, you, you know, and then the devil comes to you, oh, here it is, 2014. You didn't get it. So what? What's that got to do with anything? I'm not Cinderella. I'm not going to turn into a pumpkin at midnight. Glory to God. Just because the clock strikes 12 don't mean I turn into a pumpkin and I don't get what I'm believing for. What I'm believing for has been hold, is holding on. I'm holding on to something by something called faith. Glory to God. And that faith came out of the Word of God. And with God, there's no time. Hallelujah. And when I prayed that I believed that I received, He said, I'll have it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So 2014, 2015, 2016, I don't care as long as I get it. Are you here? You're going home. You didn't have in 2013. You don't have any faith. My faith groweth exceedingly. How about yours? I said, how about yours? Does your faith grow exceedingly? Hallelujah. Well, how does it grow exceedingly? Out of the word of God. God's word calls it. Let me tell you something, now, folks. You're going to face afflictions. You're going to face resistance. You're going to face battles against the things you're believing for. How many have ever had that happen? It still hurts. How many know pain can talk? How many of those symptoms can talk? Yeah. And they can talk real loud. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Jonah got in the whale's belly and finally looked at it and said, I will not observe lying vanities. Amen. Now he's in the belly. Right. He's in there with fish guts and seaweed. And gastric juices. Hello? Just painting the picture for you. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a submarine ride. He didn't get in there and start going, We all live on a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. He wasn't singing like that. He's in there with no light. He didn't have a, 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 you know, an emergency kit to light up and light up the inside of the belly. Are you here? He's in there with the seaweed, the fish guts, the gastric juices, and he looks around in the dark and goes, I will not observe lying vanities. You're going to have to get to the place you look at those circumstances and say, I will not observe, I will not observe lying vanities. I will hold fast my confidence. He is faithful that promised, hallelujah, I believe that I receive, therefore I have in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. But the afflictions will come. You'll face them. It's time we stop painting a false scenario to humanity that just because you come into the kingdom and you have faith, you won't face any trouble. As a matter of fact, when Jesus appeared to the apostle Paul and then he talked to him and he told, he told um, Simon to go, to go find one Paul named Sarsis. Time one time Paul named Sarsis. One Saul of Tarsus. With some seafood sauce on it. I've just got all tongue tied. Hallelujah. Sometimes you get so tongue tied, it's kind of hard to recover. Praise God. For behold, he prayeth. He said, Lord, I know this man. How he's brought great, you know, he, he's, he's gone and done the things he's done. And the Lord says, He's a chosen vessel unto me, and I have shown him what's, what things he must suffer for my name's sake. Afflictions were coming. I said, Afflictions were coming. And then Paul listed them over when he wrote to the church at Corinth. He listed, took him a whole chapter to list all the stuff he went through. Right. Stuff he had, he dealt with. As a, now listen, they weren't sickness, they weren't disease. He wasn't plagued with, you know, um, he wasn't being plagued with junk that the God was putting on him. He was, being, uh, he was being persecuted. He was facing afflictions. The devil was coming against him. He was being buffeted. You know, the Paul, Paul said, you know, that for the abundance of the revelations, he said, I besought the Lord three times that this messenger, this messenger of Satan, we take him away from it because he buffeted me daily. 
because of the abundance of the revelation, the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you and your weakness are made perfect. Now, he did not say, you got to put up with it and it's going to take you down and you're going to get crushed by it. He said, my grace is enough. When you are weak, then are you strong. Paul said, therefore, I'll rejoice in my infirmities. That why? The power of Christ might rest upon me. Because there's an infusion and there's a power that comes out of the power of Christ that I don't have in me naturally. So when I face the, 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 uh, the adversary, when I face the messenger of Satan who's buffeting me, and I reach the end of my rope, and I'm, I'm standing strong in my faith, but I can't do anything else, woo, I can begin to rejoice even more. Why? The power of Christ is coming on me. The anointed one and his anointing comes on me, and it empowers me not to put up with it, but to be victorious over it. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. What do you mean? They stoned him and left him for dead, but the power of Christ came on him, and he rose up alive and well, glory to God, and went into the city and kept preaching Christ. Amen. They beat him. They tried to kill him. The devil tried to kill him in a shipwreck. He got bit by serpents, and he just shook it off into the fire. Why? The power of Christ came on him, Amen. and he overcame. If you've reached the end of all you know to do and you've believed as far as you know how to believe, oh, just look up into heaven and say, glory be to God. Now I have reached my limitation. I have reached the end. And I'm going to rejoice in this place. Why? The power of Christ comes on me. I said, the power of Christ comes on me. My grace is sufficient. Ooh, glory. I said, Glory. The power of Christ comes on you. And what is the power of Christ? Well, we know that the anointing, according to Isaiah, is the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God. Hallelujah. So when I reach the end of my rope, his anointing comes to destroy the yoke and remove the burden. They may stone you and leave you for dead. You'll just get up and walk away from it. Hallelujah. You know, they had to shake him up when he showed up. Man, we just left you for dead. Yeah, but you, you forgot one thing, the anointing factor. You forgot about the Holy Ghost. You forgot that although you left me for dead, the greater one on the inside of me rose up, hallelujah, and released his anointing into my life and raised me up, glory to God. Amen. And now I'm sufficient in his sufficiency. Amen. Hallelujah. He wrote one place, said, not that we're sufficient of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of him. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Paul wrote and said in Acts 20, 23, that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city that bonds and afflictions awaited him. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 6, 4, he said, In all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience in afflictions and necessities and distresses. Colossians 1, 24, Who now rejoice in my sufferings to you. For you, and fill up that which is beyond the, behind the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 3.3. 3, no man should be moved by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. This, we've got to understand that there's going to be resistance to you walking by faith. Amen. It's foolish to believe that you're going to get a whole one scripture, you're going to quote it seven times, and you ain't never going to have any more problem with the devil. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I got faith. I'm not going to have any more trouble with the devil. Then you're just a liar. Amen. And anybody that's listening to you needs to stop listening to you until you get your doctrine straight. Amen. How many know Jesus came out, came out, came into the, uh, went into the wilderness, tempted of the devil, overcame him through all three temptations with the word of God, and the Bible said he left him for a season. Didn't leave him forever. If he didn't leave Jesus forever, he ain't leaving you forever. Hello. If the faith of Jesus didn't run him off forever, yours won't. Now, Jesus didn't use his faith to run him off. As a matter of fact, remember when he came to the man, the legion, and they said, have you come to torment us before the time? The devil has a right to be here for until a certain season. And after that, we get to see him thrown into the pit. And you're going to go, and you're going to be like everybody else going, you got to be kidding me. Is that the one that caused the nations to tremble? Right. So the Bible says. Right. We'll stand and say, is that the one that caused the nations to tremble? Right. The little wizard of Oz with his machine. That's where the devil is. Blowing smoke, 
blowing, you know, accusations, all kinds of stuff, your direction. And when, we, when that time he gets, he gets thrown out, we're going, oh, we're going, is he really, that's the one? You've got to be kidding me. Are you here? You've gone home. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 5. Put First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, 9, 10 up there. I did bring my Bible out here. I got my, I got everything here on my iPad. I thought I'd left my Bible in my office, but hallelujah, thank God I didn't. First Peter. Chapter 5, 2 Peter chapter 3 won't work. I mean, it's a good scripture, but it's not going to work here. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, underline that word, folks, there's an adversary out there. He is sent by himself. He's not God's puppy dog. He's not a tool in the hand that God sent to, you know, test you and try you. He is an emissary of himself. Demon spirits are emissaries of the devil. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary of the devil, as, underline the word as. See, there is a roaring lion. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, glory to God. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But Satan comes as a roaring lion. What does the devil always do? He's always trying to imitate. Always trying to imitate. Because he has nothing of his own. Except what he can imitate and get out of you to get you to give to him. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist? How are you supposed to resist? Steadfast in the faith. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now stop. Have you ever thought I'm the only one going through this? You know, it's like the Eat Worm song. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Think I'll eat some worms. That'll help you. I'm just telling you, that'll, that'll, that'll just fix everything for you. No, it won't. That's how kids think, you know. Eat some worms, that'll fix the fact that nobody likes me, everybody hates me. They see you eating worms, and they, they really won't like you. You think the girls will think you got cooties, they'll think you got cooties and worms in your teeth. I mean, you ain't, ain't going to get a kiss from her now. Amen. No, the Bible says that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren. You're not alone in this thing. Now, Satan will try to make you think you're alone. Satan might try to make you think you're the only one who didn't get an answer to prayer. You'll go to a prayer, test, prayer meeting, testimony meeting. Now, see, if you grew up Pentecostal like I did, we had them every week. Hello? We always had a testimony meeting. Now, usually, we, you know, every once in a while we had some, somebody would get up and get something different than the, than the standard you know, Pentecostal testimony. They might actually get and say, the Lord healed me this week. Then everybody else will testify, I want to thank the Lord that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray for me that I hold true to the end. And the next person get up and say the same thing. You know, I want to thank the Lord I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray for me that I hold You understand, I grew up in a particular Pentecostal denomination that sanctification was a second definite work of grace. And you had to get sanctified before you could get filled with the Holy Ghost. You had me get holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, sanctified. Then you could get filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. Well, I found out you can get filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, Jesus is our sanctification. Right. Amen. I believe, I know this, under the terminology of sanctification, it means living a separated lifestyle. I believe you should be, every Christian should be doing that. Okay. Amen. But there's not like one miraculous, and you'll ever live unholy again. Okay. It doesn't work that way. No. Amen. You might get, but you can go out tomorrow and get um, because you got to deal with your flesh. You got to keep it under. You got to control it. Can you say amen? Can somebody say amen? amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So whom, there's an adversary, the devil, who walks about as a roaring lion. We are commanded. We're not asked to. We're commanded to. 
didn't say lay down and look at the finished work of Jesus. It said resist. Yeah, that's right. You got to put some effort in there. You got to put some faith in there. You got to get understand your ground in Jesus' name. You can't go, I'm under grace. He's not going to bother me. Hogwash! He's going to slap your head where your feet were two seconds before you walk around thinking like that. You'll be going around going, how in the world did this happen to me? Because you were dumb. The Bible's already warned you. <coughs> Are you here? He's already told you there's an enemy out there. He's coming as a roaring lion. He's looking whom he may devour. Who's he going to devour? Dummies. Those who think they don't have to resist. Those who don't have on the armor of God. Those who aren't standing in their battleground. Look over in Ephesians chapter 6. I know we don't have it up there. I've got to. Well, ever since the computer got rebuilt, I just never got around to adding all the Bible versions back in with the uh, cost. I don't know if it's... it's um, Phyllis may or may not be out there. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, we know, uh, we, reading from verse, verse 13, take the whole armor of God. And... Um, He goes, wherefore take unto you the verse 13, the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now, like I said, we've said this before. Phillips had, um, J.B. Phillips had um, a couple of translations that were loose translations before what you can currently buy now called the J.B. Phillips, you know, the New Testament in modern English. What you buy now is the one that he did when he found out people were actually quoting him. He said, people are going to quote me and start using me as a, uh, an authoritative translation that I got to clean it up and make it more accurate. So he went back and made a real accurate verse. He kind of paraphrased and took some liberties and the other. Kind of like the message. You understand the message is not a translation. It is a paraphrase. The Living Bible is a paraphrase. Now, they're, they're, they're great to maybe shed some light in some areas, but you can't quote them accurately as doctrinal verses because they're a paraphrase. It's a verse's opinion on how that was to be translated. That's why it's called a paraphrase. It is not a translation. And just be, just be you know, it's, it's fine. It's fine to read it. It's fine to use it. It's fine for it to add light, but don't make it your doctrinal basis of things. Amen. Measure it against something that is a translation. Amen. Make sure you're accurate. Yes. Amen. Isn't that right, Brother Bill? Amen. Amen. My exegesis master here. <laughs> uh, Bible master. Ha. Amen. I'm Grasshopper. He's master. All right, anyway. <laughs> Just miss. Hallelujah. Where was I before I got off on the grasshopper thing? Oh, but Phillips, in his, one of the er, his earlier things before he got to the real technical, here in Ephesians he goes, having done all to stand, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. That's steadfastness. You don't just go, well, praise God, won that battle, hang up the sword and lay down. Have you ever seen the movies? Anybody ever seen the John Wayne movie, The Sands of Iwo Jima? Anybody ever seen that movie? Y'all have never seen The Sands of Iwo Jima. Two people. My daughter's one of them. Is Jessica in here? She'd raise her hand. Caps, you've never seen the sands of evil? All right. Jet Shannon, run to the house and get it. We're keeping them all here until after they all see it. Well, what happens is Riker, this is the sergeant, John Wayne's Riker, right up there, they fight, they fight, they win. They're, they're sitting there kind of relishing in the victory, and a Japanese lifts up, lifts up a, a little uh, hatch and shoots him in the back. They've, they've got the island. They've won the battle. He gets shot and gets killed right there. Why? He was relishing in the victory instead of staying steadfast, ready to do battle again. So we got to remain steadfast. Yeah, John, the Duke got killed. Even the Duke can make a mistake. Duke makes lots of mistakes, but the Duke made a mistake. The what? Oh. Well, you got to watch to find how he got there. All right. It's still good. I mean, I've seen the whole thing, seen the end before, and still watch it. So I messed up his movie. <laughs> Which you, I had, you should have plugged your ears while I was doing that. He didn't know it was coming. <laughs> but you understand that if we're going to win battles and, and not just win a battle and then get taken out, we got to stay vigilant. Yeah. We got to stay ready. And we can't quit and throw in the towel and get upset just because something didn't happen on a certain timetable. 
Now nah, I need a new word. You don't need a new word. You've already got a word that's working for you. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to close here because we're going to count down to the new year. All right? Anybody got a timer? We don't have a timer for the wall or clock or anything. So I need a clock that counts down for me, but I don't have one here. Huh? New Year countdown. We're getting close. All right. Is that <laughs> it's ready to go, isn't it? Hebrews. <whistles> Chapter 2, verse 1. Y'all ready? You don't have to put it up. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them which heard him. But God also bearing the witnesses with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. Now, notice this. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard. All right. Y'all ready? Is it countdown time? Three, say four, five. Oh, we went over, didn't we? All right. Let's just go. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know, whatever. Three, two, one. Happy New Year! I had more time than that. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, happy new year. We're glad to have a new year. But guess what? Your faith for 2013 will work in 2014. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Say, so can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, I just want to, I want to leave that with y'all tonight. Um, all of my Rhema people, if you're going to renew any license or whatever, when you click the submit button, don't click it again. Mine locked up, and I clicked it four or five times, and I got four or five pending $100 charges out there. <laughs> called my credit card. They called Rhema. They called me back. They said, we won't run them through. I said, thank you. But, you know, I got a suggestion. How about when you click the submit button, another pop-up box comes up and says, in progress? <laughs> don't do it again. No, I call my credit. They say, oh, yeah, because I had six, $700 on that credit card today, and all of a sudden, I get declined. How can I get declined? <laughs> well, you got, I said, do I have a bunch of charges pending for Ramos up? Yep. One, two, three. They start counting them off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Moral of story. Grasshoppers. Is never commit, click submit button more than once. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord? All right. Uh, Wednesday night week, we'll have our first Wednesday night dinner of the year. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know what the menu will be. We'll let you know on Sunday. As of Thursday, right? I say Thursday. Everything's back on regular schedule. Okay? Why are you saying Thursday? Because we're not having church tomorrow night. All right? I want to thank all of y'all for coming. Did anybody get ministered to by this? Help anybody? Are you ready to go? I mean, you caught a lot ready to rock. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, look. Um, don't forget to um, go get anything you brought. and don't, don't, Just don't leave it here. You don't need to leave it here in the refrigerator. Just sit there and go to bed. Hallelujah. What happens a lot of times is people put stuff, oh, we'll just leave it in the refrigerator. It never gets used. And then three weeks later, we're throwing it away. So, you know, um, we, we appreciate everybody that brought something tonight. Some of you, you came and you brought, you didn't, you know, get a chance to get anything big. That's okay. We had enough stuff. Everybody got happy. Um, so, ba based on the response, I think we, did, we were pretty good, except we probably ought to have some more things like, Quiches or egg casseroles, breakfast casseroles, and that kind of stuff that people bring yeah. instead of trying to cook it fresh here on site, okay? All right. Um, the next year, then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of maybe add some different little flavor to it, all right? And, you know, I know this. I kind of looked at it and went, sugar, 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 sugar. I like sugar, but that's a sugar overdose there, you know? Hallelujah. I mean, we had sugar, 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 sugar. Then we had Coke, you know, more sugar. Hallelujah. Orange juice, which is very, it's got a lot, of, a lot of natural sugar, but it's still sugar. Hallelujah. And uh, we have one diet Pepsi, but that tells your body that you're still getting sugar, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, let's stand up. We, we just, oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for the goodness of the Lord. 
Thank you for the mercy of the Lord. We speak over you and we speak life over this congregation. We thank you that as we head into this, this, this next year as a congregation, Father, we just thank you that blessings are on everybody's households. Goodness overtakes them. They just keep going forward in the faith that they have and laying hold and continue to lay hold of the promises and that they don't let go of anything they're believing for. They just press in in Jesus' name. Thank you.